of phantoms and monsters. They exist among us, and sometimes they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Folks, good evening and welcome to another episode of Phantoms and Monsters Personal Reports, where I narrate and discuss some of the cryptid and unexplained sightings and encounters submitted to Phantoms and Monsters and the Phantoms and Monsters 14 research team. So thanks for joining me. Uh, this channel is made possible by you uh, clicking on the subscribe and like buttons and by you sharing our programming. Uh, super chat and super thanks donations are appreciate it. You can click the dollar icon located below the chat box and the uh, buy me a coffee link is also below. So thanks for your consideration. Uh, I want to thank all new members to the channel as well as first timers in the chat. If you're listening to me for the first time, please like and subscribe to the channel. Now, if you're in the chat and you have a question, please use all caps. And I'll try to get to each and every one of them after my presentation. And I'll let you know uh, when I'm on the last account. And you can go ahead and um, start posting your question in the chat room. And Mortal Clown, thank you for your donation. Much appreciated. Now, uh, tonight, I, I've investigated wing humanoid sightings since 1981 when I first included cryptid creatures as part of my paranormal research. And in 1988, I had a personal unexplained encounter with a winged humanoid here in South Central Pennsylvania. Now, since the beginning of the millennium, a, a special term has surfaced as part of the description of several of these sightings, Jeepers Creepers. Now, if you're familiar with modern horror films, then you'll have an idea what I'm talking about. In 2001, an American German horror film that took its name from the 1938 song Jeepers Creepers was released. It was a tale about two older siblings who became the targets of a demonic creature known as the Creeper in rural Florida. Now, the fact that several witnesses have compared the winged being that they encountered as resembling the Creeper is interesting. Um, I suppose it's a culture phenomenon. Uh, basically because there are a few other creatures, natural or fictional, to compare it to. Now, a few of the Chicago Mothman witnesses mentioned the Creeper character when uh, giving a general description, though the eventual comparison came down to the bat-like wing structure and the ability to instantly launch itself into flight. Now, during that same period of time, uh, that we were receiving these reports in the Chicago area, we were also receiving accounts of similar winged beings in other locations throughout the United States and Canada. <clears throat> now, most of the sightings were very brief and without much detail, but a few specific reports compounded our curiosity. So uh, I hope you enjoy the presentation. Again, I will answer questions at the end. So uh, here we go. Uh, this first, uh, account that I received stated, I just found out about the flying humanoid settings around Chicago. In fact, I'm going to get the book and see if there is anything related to what I encountered in the summer of 2010. This took place in Northern Illinois, not far from Rockford. My friend and I were just riding around in my car. As the day continued, we decided to head out towards the country back roads. Now, we were 17, and this was the summer before our senior year in high school. We rode around for several hours at night, and around 10 p.m., we were on a gravel road uh, that I wasn't familiar with. It was a location that has lots of farmland all around and, few houses, and a few houses here and there. 
Now, we were talking while I'm speeding along the gravel road. There was no drinking or drugs involved. The corn on both sides of the road was very high. I looked ahead and noticed that the road was about to dip, so I slowed back. And as I approached the dip, I could see the corn shaking to the right of me as the headlight hit it. We both stopped talking as we watched the corn. I thought it was probably a deer about to sprint out onto the road, so I slowed down to a crawl. The corn was now shaking violently. We're staring at the corn waiting for the deer to jump out. Then suddenly, the corn literally opens up just to the right of us. This thing steps out. It was the size of a large man in all black. As it walked out of the corn, it was well illuminated by my headlights. It leaped and opened these huge set of wings and instantly went airborne. It quickly flew right in front of my car and swooped up into the air as it reached the other side of the road. I swear the first thing that came to my mind was the Jeepers Creepers monster. I didn't see any facial features, but the wings were very wide and looked like that of a giant thing. I floored the gas pedal. My friend was yelling to get out of there. I drove as fast as I could trying to maintain control on the gravel surface. We drove for a good five minutes before saying a word. The whole time we were looking around us, hoping that thing wasn't chasing us. Now we began to calm down and soon ended up on a road I knew. As I thought about it, that thing looked like it was covered in shiny black tar. It had a weird sheen to it. The fact that it accelerated on, into flight so quickly had me stumped. My friend and I talked about it through our entire senior year and never did have a clue as to what we saw. We referred to it as the flying tar man. We didn't dare tell anyone else at school. I recently told my wife about it, but she's a skeptic and doesn't believe in the supernatural. Anyway, after I heard about the sightings around Chicago, I figured I'd track you down and write, a, write to you about it. I live in Texas currently, thanks for reading. Well, I, I called the witness, and, uh, and we talked about the incident. Uh, this occurred in Win Winnebago County, just north of Rockville, Illinois, on a gravel road off of Route 70. Uh, he said he believes it was somewhere near Wimbledon, Wimbledon. The description is like the wing humanoids reported to us in, in 2017. Now, he told me that the height was about six foot and the body was very thin. He estimated the wingspan was about 15 feet. He also said that it had arms and legs. The Jeepers Creepers reference has also been used by several witnesses from the Chicago area as well. So this next report, hello, Lon. First, I would like to thank you for your sight. Here, I don't feel ridiculed telling my story. Even if I am, I don't care what the skeptics think. I know what I saw and it's the truth. In July 2006 on the 15th or 16th, my husband and I were in the process of moving from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to a small area between Whitewater and Eagle, Wisconsin. It was about 9.30 p.m., and there was a bright full moon in the clear sky. Now, we were traveling down Highway 59 east past Eagle, turning onto Road X, a somewhat desolate stretch. A thin band of trees are on each side of the road with open fields behind them. This area is about 18 miles approximately east of Whitewater, located between Eagle and North Prairie, Wisconsin. Now, my husband was driving, his two children in the back seat, I believe, I believe uh, were asleep, suddenly swooping over the trees on our left, lowering down in front of the car windshield, then upwards again over the treetops to our right, gliding at a slow ascent over the field was what I describe as a man with bat-like features, flying like a bat. This creature was as real as you and I. We had a very close look at it. It was long, six to seven foot in length. I say length because it was flying sideways, looking into the car much like doing the side stroke. It was a dark gray, very leathery skin, one wing kind of tucked into its side, the one facing the ground, and the other flapping while it flew. 
the wing was huge and exactly like a bat. What got me the most were the eyes. They were very round. Where the eyes would be looked roomy. The best way to describe it, the irises were of a very pale blue. I was not afraid. I was astonished, amazed, and even excited. My husband was shaking up. It would not stop when I asked him to. The kids were in the car. I hope this will bring some more people forward who have seen this mysterious creature or creatures as well. I was writing, I was reading recently online of a woman in Monot, Wisconsin, who in about 1960 also had seen the, a creature of this description. I noticed that some who have witnessed this to compare it to the creature from the movie Jeepers Creepers. There are similarities. I had never seen the movie yet prior to my sighting. Now, this uh, this sighting was on the edge of the Kettle Moraine uh, Low Prairie State Natural Area, which is an area where we've had a lot of reports of a lot of different things over the years. Now, the pale blue eyes and the sideways flight using one wing is very interesting. And in fact, I don't think we ever got another sighting like that. Out of all the sightings I have received over the years, these characteristics are unique. Uh, another example of how bizarre and mysterious these beings really are. I'm going to include the sighting in the interactive mat, and I did. I put it as part of the Chicago sightings. Now, um, I was contacted by a man who went by the name of Edward in Kansas City. Uh, Kansas City, Kansas, by the way, uh, by telephone. After he read my book, Mothman Dynasty, Chicago's Winged Humanoids, he wanted to retell his encounter. Edward wanted to relay an encounter that he and his cousin had in the summer of 1999 between 10 and 11 p.m. local time. They were traveling southbound on I-49 towards Joplin, Missouri. Now, Edward was driving. He could not recall the exact area, but they were not too many miles from Joplin. He states that he noticed a tall figure quickly running from the direction of the median to his left, then directly in front of his car. Now, both he and his cousin observed this human-like being, so they immediately said to each other that it looked like a gargoyle. The headlights illuminated the humanoid as well that both witnesses were able to get a good description of it. The gargoyle was at least six and a half feet in height and had dark, leathery, hairless skin all over its body. The being looked towards the witnesses and the face had a stark flattened facial features with dark, excuse me, large deep set eyes. There were large wings that lay flat on its back but were extended as it reached the other side of the highway. Edward believes the being had begun to ascend into the air and above the field. Now Edward noted that he had no other comparison to make of the humanoid other than that of a gargoyle. But after he watched the movie Jeepers Creepers after the film was released in 2001, he stated that the human was very similar to the Creeper character. Now, both witnesses uh, kept quiet about the encounter until a few years later when Edward married his wife. Now, he and his cousin both recounted the incident to her. Uh, so the witness seemed grateful that he could tell a story without someone thinking he was crazy. And I get that a lot. Um, Okay, this next account, a woman was driving late at night from work in rural Oregon when she saw a winged creature on the road. Then she heard noises as if she had run over the being. That's when things got interesting. She states, I experienced something in the mid 80s, something that I did not know what it was until 20 years later when I saw Jeepers Creepers. And that's how I can explain what the character, what character, excuse me, what creature I saw. I was driving from work, taking a country road. I worked evenings and uh, late nights. I saw an object above the ground, but in the roadway on a country road coming towards me. I thought maybe an owl or something going over the road and I better slow down. Then it appeared and looked like a creature. Then it disappeared and I thought, nah, but then it turned totally black. And suddenly, underneath my car, there was like a thump, thump, thump. I thought I ran over something. I looked back. I looked to the right and to the left in my mirrors. You know, the sides. Turning, turned my head. I had a station wagon. 
Anyway, suddenly I see these arms, a hand and a wing, then a face. And the eyes were orange color, but they were human-like too, but very large. The nose looked human, but the skin, you could see the veins on the wings. It's leathery. It was like if you could, uh, if you held your ear up to a light, you could see right through it a little bit. It was like that. It then crawled on the top and it came over in front of the windshield a bit with its arms and wings flapping here and there. The next thing I knew, excuse me, the next thing I heard, thump, 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 thump. It was now on the backside on the ground and it was still moving. I was wondering, would it stand up? Is it okay? It's my character, you know, I don't want to hit and run anything. I'm debating that and I slowed down for some reason. It got up, turned and looked at me. It was crippled, struggling to stretch and everything. After a while, I, it got stretched out. It turned towards the field that had a wood railing, pasture-like with a tree line and the moon in the background. It flew, but it hit the ground again because it was wobbling. But it got up and flew again. Then it disappeared. To this day, I, I'm still shaking, I'm kind of shaken about it. I never knew until I saw the movie. Then just two months ago, I looked up on the internet about the movie and about the creature, and it still doesn't make sense. Jeepers Creepers. I thought, did they see this thing before they made the movie? This was in Oregon outside of Amity. I live way up in Malala, and I traveled through a lot of counties to get to my job. I had moved. I was driving at night. The honest thing was the moon was, was shown at several times. It was almost like it brightened up and I saw him. I was on the driver's side. I was terrified. You're the only, only the second person I ever told. It took me two to three weeks or more to go back on that road again. Now in this next account, the witness and two others were driving late at night when they encountered a huge winged creature that each observed clearly just after the encounter a relative was hit by a drunk driver. Now, in the summer, they stayed in the summer of 2003, when I was 16, my mom, a friend, and I were driving down a road in Jasper Highlands area in Tennessee at about 1 a.m. A huge flying creature that looked human-like flew low over the car. The only thing that I can think comparing to is that thing in those Jeepers Creepers movies. All three of us saw it and were terrified. We were in a convertible with the top down, so we got a pretty good look at it. I'm not really a religious person, but I also makes me wonder if it was like an angel of death or something, because that same day, about 30 minutes later, my uncle was hit by a car while walking home. We had passed him walking about a minute before it happened. He didn't know it was, we didn't know it was him, and my mom was reluctant about picking up strangers, especially with two teens in the car. But if we had stopped, that drunk driver could have killed all of us. All the things that happened that day still haunt me. I'm a very proof, sci proof science-driven person, so I don't even tell people about this because I don't want them to think that I'm insane. I just needed to put it out there uh, to, and to you. Do you believe that winged beings foretell bad fortune? Well... I guess you can look at that and, and, and say, well, maybe it was a harbinger. I don't know. Uh, however, many people do believe this to be true, uh, that harbinger theory. You know, and that all goes back to the Silver Bridge collapse at Point Pleasant. Uh, let's see. Okay. A Forest Park, Illinois resident recalls an encounter that he and his friends had with a winged humanoid that reminded him of the Jeepers Creepers creature. I was 16 or 17 around 2009 with a group of friends, eight of us maybe, walking down my block in Forest Park, Illinois, heading towards one of my friend's houses. It was summer around 9 p.m. The sun was already set. Now, once we made it to the end of my block at an intersection, perched atop a 20-foot street lamp was a figure, humanoid but with wings, standing relatively still. I and all my friends saw it. Started at, 
started out it for a few seconds all muttering in disbelief. After those seconds of collective confusion, the thing spread its wing fully. I don't think either of us saw it fly off or anything because the moment it did that, we all took off running. Half of us one way and half the other. Guessing neither of us had ever run that fast in our lives. I eventually made it to my friend's house uh, we were originally tending to go to. Now, obviously, we were freaked out, asking each other, oh, what the hell did we just see? Honestly, not talking about it too much after the situation. Now, I'm 29 now. None of those friends that I keep in contact with remember seeing red eyes. But everything else was the same as how the Mothman is described. At that time, neither of us had uh, even heard of the Mothman or even that there had been a sighting in the Chicago area. But I, without a doubt, know what I saw was real because the group saw the exact same thing at the exact same moment. If I was by myself, I don't know if I would have even believed it myself. Honestly, we were out there so fast that I couldn't pick up much of the vibe that it gave off. All I know is that it wasn't an owl, crane, or a drone. It kind of reminded me of the creature from Jeepers Creepers film. You know of that movie. Uh, this next account, an unknown winged creature likened to the Jeepers Creepers entity from the films has been seen in encounter on Palm Island, Florida for decades, according to the witnesses. A state, there is this thing that has been seen on Palm Island, Florida for decades. It's just one of the many evil, scary things that are there and show ourselves when it wants to. Well, this one thing is pure evil. It shows itself to people wearing a dark trench coat not many have seen his face, but my brothers have. It follows them throughout the community, always at night, always wearing a coat. You see, on Palm Island, if you want to go somewhere, you, you've got to walk. No matter what the time is, if you want to get home, you just walk. And the streets are pitch black with no street lights. So it would follow them. Now, this thing is huge, bigger than any man, and scary as heck. It all... It would always keep the same distance behind them and in the darkness of the night as they would hear it, its sound of uh, its hooves walking on the road. When they'd make it home, they, it would torment them the whole night, running on the roof or banging on the walls or even under the house. Then when they are asleep, it shows itself to them in its true form. It comes to them in their nightmares. Now, my brothers all described it in the same way. It looked like the thing from Jeepers Creepers. Mind you, it, it's been acted them way before the movie came out. It's big with this monstrous face, uglier than more grotesque than you can imagine. It's got hooves, long claw-like figure, fingers, and enormous wings that uses to chase them. Every time it chased them, it's always caught them. My brother said he even tried in a nightmare to jump off a cliff. He said he'd rather die than let it take him, but as he jumps off a cliff and as if he was falling, all he could hear was the sound of the wings. Now all my brothers see this thing and have been for decades now. It stands up in the darkness holding a rope, trying to make them commit you know what. And other times it torments them to the point where they just can't sleep. If they do it, if, if they do, it goes to them in their dreams. I know my brothers are not the only ones on Palm Island have seen this. This thing just roams around Palm Island freely. Now, this next account, a Garland, Texas, father, mother, and son experienced sightings and encounters with a large winged humanoid in their residential neighborhood. They also observed unexplained lights in the sky. I uh, received this telephone call from R.C. and his wife, who live in the residential neighborhood of Garland, Texas. They described three different sightings encounters with a winged humanoid near their home between May 2020 to November 2020. They said that the winged humanoid had a build like the Jeepers Creepers film character, but much larger. Each sighting was observed from outside their home. 
They described it as a thin, dark-colored, human-like body with legs and large bat-like wings that had a total span of over 15 feet. The head was not distinct and seemed to be part of the upper body. On one occasion, the winged humanoid flew above them in a short distance, approximately 50 feet or so. Now, they both felt a strange pressure that emanated from the being. They never heard any sounds associated with this winged creature. Now, they did see it fly into a neighbor's tree during one of the sightings, but it totally disappeared. They have not seen it since. And when they attempted to tell friends, family, and neighbors, they were totally rebuffed. Now, R.C. did mention that they are Hispanic and that many of the, the people around them are very superstitious when it comes to supernatural and the unknown creatures. Now, during the same period, they'd encountered an unexplained series of lights and anomalies one evening. Both work late shifts and are home in the early morning. They usually enjoy taking late night walks around the neighborhood. One night, they heard a loud, shrill screams coming from down the street. And as they were walking in the direction of the sounds, approximately 2 a.m., they both observed the erratic movement of blue and red orb-like lights in the sky. As they continued to watch the lights, a huge dome of light filled the sky. They then heard what they described as mechanical sounds. They never did find out the source of the screams, but believed it was associated with the unusual lights. Now. Now, it came apparent not only in Chicagoland incidents, but um, throughout North America, that a large percentage of the witnesses of these creatures were Hispanic descent. I still haven't been able to figure that out. Uh, you know, we just recently, about a year ago, started to disclose that component of the sighting. So um, I think there's something to it. I, I don't know if it, it, it's it's something to do with their um, the heritage or, or what's going on, but uh, it, it does happen. <laughs> so it's it's pretty unusual. Now, the next account, a few years back in 2011 or so, I was living in the Bronx. My mom and I were outside having yarns and laugh. She heard this strange noise, which sounded like an aircraft or flying object cutting through the air. At first, I thought she was joking until I heard it. It was like, look, baby, it looks like a bat. It was like, that's too big to be a bat. Then she was like, well, it must be a weather balloon. She then walks back to the house strangely. So I sat at the back, waiting for her to come back. She came back with a cup of coffee when I heard something cutting through the treetops. Whatever it was had landed on my neighbor's tree. And it had been cut back a lot, but had enough leaves covering it. It had a big thump to it when it landed. Mom ran inside when she heard it. I was freaking out, but couldn't help but stare. As I walked to the fence, I noticed that there was no wind whatsoever. As I was trying to get a better look, a big deep breath blew into my face. I was startled, looked, stood back and said, if you're a man of God, show your face now. But if not, just leave, please. As I was standing back, I saw it. Shocked like a stunned mullet, this big wind roared up, and with a huge thump, it flew into midair. That thing looked like the Jeepers Creepers creature. Big, tall, dark man. Big build, solid body, seven to eight foot, and it looked like it had wings like a bat. Shocked, I ran into the house and went directly to my room, laid down and thinking about what I had just witnessed. Now, the next morning, mom left to go to work, so I decided to rake the backyard. Then my neighbor yelled, hey, what happened to you last night? He then said, you're lucky it didn't take you. He yarned about an old folk tale that there was a man with wings like a bat that used to come around every now and then, take women back to where he lived and make them his wives. The way he described it was like what I saw. Now, still to this day, I don't know for sure what or who this thing was. Now, I, I believe that the witness may have lived in um, in an Arawak, which is in Curacao, Northern Antilles, after I looked into it. It's an immigrant neighborhood in the Bronx, New York. Um, 
I'm not familiar with the folklore, but I have heard similar accounts from other Caribbean nationals. So I don't know exactly what that's all about, but uh, it's pretty interesting. So uh, this next account is the last account. So if you have questions, go ahead and start posting them up on the chat. Now, two separate witnesses described their sighting in South New Jersey. The description is compared to the wing being in the Jeepers Creepers film. Uh, this was forwarded to me in 2014. A state, I came across your site looking for answers to what my daughter and I see in the sky, and there are similar stories to ours. <clears throat> I'm from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and approximately two years ago, 2012, to this day, my daughter and I were riding our bikes. It was bright that night due to a full moon. Not many clouds in the sky, but a few that would occasionally make the, the night darker. We stopped at a friend's house. Her and her two daughters came out, and we were just talking. I happened to look up in the sky, and there's this flying, long, human-shaped thing with a wingspan approximately seven to eight foot wide. It reminded me of the movie Jeepers Creepers. My mouth just kind of opened, and I was speechless and pointing at it when it went behind a, the cloud near the moon. I told them what I had just witnessed. Everyone kind of giggled, and I told them that I had not come out of the clouds yet to keep looking. Well, to our eyes, it appeared again. My daughter just stood there watching it, repeating to herself, Mom, what is that? I know she had the same hard-to-swallow feeling I did. Now, while my friends, two other girls, ran inside screaming, we watched as it flapped and soared near the moon till it disappeared into the clouds again and never came out. I know what I had seen that night, but wouldn't know what to call it except a flying human-like creature. An experience I would never take back, and when I hear others, I really want to believe that they've seen the same thing that I had. Now, my daughter to this day, who, and she's now 14, feels that there's so much out there we really don't know about. What is myth and what is real? A night we will never forget and and keeping herself busy researching the Jersey Devil to Mothman to Slenderman. It's out there. I then received an update with the possibly the same creature and different witnesses. Lon, I live approximately one hour outside of Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and while on my way to my now wife's home to visit as the sun was going down, my best friend at the time was driving as we were all going to hang out. I was listening to music and looking out the passenger side window, just enjoying the woodlands as I like to do often. As we approached an opening on the side of the road for the power line towers, I see a lanky human-like creature with huge black wings flying up into the clearing. The event shocked both myself and my best friend at the time, who was driving so much that he, we decided to turn around and, and try to get an even better look at it. But by the time we had returned to that spot, however, there was no sight of it. He and I have never really spoken about this with anyone for fear of ridicule. But the instant I saw this on your site, I felt I needed to give that mother and daughter a peace of mind. They are crazy. And I know what they have seen. I have seen it in the woods of New Jersey almost my entire life. And I've seen almost all of the natural wildlife that occurs within it. And this was not one of them. The location was Landis Avenue in Buena Vista Township, New Jersey. The sun had just started going down, so there was still some light shining down in the area. Very bizarre creature, whatever it was. Now, this location is further south and not far from the Pine Barrens. So it's an area known for various cryptid sightings. However, our sighting, uh, other sightings will come forward at some point, hopefully. Um, so look, I'm going to go ahead. I got another one here. So I'm going to go ahead since we got some time, I'm going to go ahead and read it as well. Now, if you, for those who remember the late JC Johnson, he and his team were contacted in, uh, on Friday, September 21st, and I think it was 2013. 
in reference to a series of disturbing incidents occurring at the residence at, the, at a residence in the Four Corners area in New Mexico. Now, this was on the reservation as well. This was uh, the um, Diné Navajo Reservation. Now, the family had experienced loud clawing sounds and indiscernible growls coming from outside their home. The daughter has also endured clawing outside her bedroom window as well as unexplained activity within the home. She woke to claw marks on her back and noticed items moved in her bedroom. There had been several attempts to confront this being, but in each instance, it had eluded the efforts. Now, there has been damage to the house and the, ve and the vehicle because of their attacks. Deep claw and chew marks can be seen on the truck headlight housing and grill. There have been a few three prints left on the side of the house and on the uh, ground around the residence. Uh, there were two separate descriptions presented to J.C. One depiction was that of it, what resembled the Creeper from the Jeepers Creepers horror film series. A more detailed summary was offered by a witness who observed this being while it was sitting on the ground. It was covered in gray hair and a three-clawed appendage was visible. The torso to head height of this being was about five feet sitting, which would make it approximately eight to nine feet in full height. There is an indication that this being has wings, which would explain the odd patches of trampled corn stalks in the field as it would fly and then land indiscriminately. Now, something else that must be considered are the apparent attacks on the daughter within the home. There seems to be a supernatural aspect to this being, lending some credence to the fact that it may have been a thought form entity manifesting and creating havoc. At this point, it's impossible to distinguish its intent. Now, I uh, I did talk to that witness, and uh, there is a video out there in, in JC's old account, YouTube account, and I have posted on the blog, but um, very interesting. She definitely was scratched by it, and there are pictures of uh, the damage to the grill, the truck, and to the house itself, the claw marks. You know, if he did notice something, and I find this very interesting, there always seems to be some reference in many of these of corn or cornfields, just like in the Jeepers Creepers film. Is that a coincidence? I don't know. So, folks, let's get your questions. And, look, I want to thank everybody for their for their donations. Mortal Clown, $20 donation. Thank you. Matthew Harrison, $5 super sticker. Carmen Villa Rule, 1999 super sticker. Nancy Malcolm, $4 super sticker. And Mortal Clown again, $20. So I definitely appreciate it. Uh, and I do thank you. Now let's get to some of the questions here. Nancy Malcolm asked, were there any reports of a creeper sighting driving a truck prior to the movie, to the movie driving a truck? You know, I, I've never seen the movies. I'm not much of a horror fan, even though I'm, I'm actually named after Lon Chaney, who did the Wolfman thing. I told that story before. My dad was a big horror fan. And uh, since his name was Lorne, uh, Lon just seemed to come naturally. So, and he was a fan of Lon Chaney Jr. So, uh, but no, I didn't, I didn't. Now, if anybody knows anything about that, uh, if there's a comparison there, please let me know about it. Jose Sanchez. These creeper beings strongly remind me of Mothman, Gorgo combination. Maybe there'd be a direct lineage between them. I don't know. It could very well be, but we do get that reference a lot. And it's just not around Chicago. You know, like you heard me say, it's it's all over the place. Um, you know, this cultural thing with films and stuff, and just like with the Glimmer Man and the, the Predator movies and, and, uh, and other type of phenomena that seem associated or very associated with the uh, with uh, horror films or other films, um, you know, it makes you want to think if, if before the, the film was, or the screenplay was even written, if there somebody had had an, a similar encounter with that. It's hard to tell, but, you know, I, I guess people like to describe things 
with what they're what they're familiar with. And of course, this Jeepers Creepers film. I mean, most people know all about them, what this thing looked like if they watched the movies and uh, what they saw, and that's the first thing that hit their mind, and that's what they described it as. Uh, Jose asks again, similarly, can these and other cryptid creatures be related in species that uh, occur among them? I, I, I very well guess it would. Absolutely. You know, people talk about gargoyles, but, you know, that <laughs> are the really gargoyles out there. We've gotten a lot of that, you know, for those people who are familiar with the sightings we got in Chicago, that gargoyle moniker comes up a lot. Are there really gargoyles out there? Are there cheaper creepers, creepers out there? I don't know. Let's see. Miss Tessa Marie, has there been more reports after the movies came out? Could it be a topo? They, I, you know, maybe, I don't know if it's a tulpa. I don't think people are manifesting these things uh, because it's a sudden, you know, it, it, it suddenly shows up as if it's coming from somewhere else and they're not prior thinking about it. The, the human mind's a crazy thing. Just like the poltergeist, and you, you don't know what the manifestation is and it just seems to come up. But uh, it is interesting. Uh, It's weird. It really is weird. Uh, Matthew Harrison asks, do these creatures have a history in Europe besides gargoyle architecture? Uh, honestly, I don't, I haven't received a whole lot of those sightings like that in Europe. Um, there are flying creatures that, uh, that are seen there's, there's a creature that's seen in the Austrian Alps that is pretty good size, wing like that with a bat like wings. Uh, I don't know what that is. And they really don't have a name for it. Um, but, you know, most of the sightings we get come from North America. ACDC 5150. Lon, are you familiar with Monk's Castle Church Cemetery in southwest Chicago? I, um, offhand, I don't know which cemetery. I mean, Chicago's got so many cemeteries. Um, I don't know if we've got a report or anything from that cemetery. We have had a lot of reports from cemeteries. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we've had sightings in cemeteries, actually. So, um, I don't know if that's, uh, uh, Marla says Kolchak. Yeah, I get that reference a lot, too. <laughs> As Valdo Greco, I'll send you sightings in Poland of similar creatures. Yeah, please do so. Uh, it's lawnstricklerfamsamoster.com. I, I definitely would appreciate that. Uh, and, and I am trying to get more sighting reports uh, or humanoid flying humanoid sightings in Europe and worldwide. Uh, I mean, I've become more and more interested in this and how many of these things are being seen outside of North America. So absolutely, if you do have something, send it to me. Uh, he says Sicily's full of stories and superstition. Absolutely. So yeah, absolutely. I would definitely love to, love to read them. Any other questions, folks? Well, I want to again thank each and all of you for coming on tonight and, and watching and chatting and uh, and for the donations. I really appreciate your support. So it makes all this possible. So again, please like, subscribe, and share. And if you had a sighting or encounter and uh, any other story that you heard about, please send it to me at fans of monsters uh, at lawnstricklerfamsmonsters.com. So until we meet again, I want to thank you all for showing up. Uh, thank you for the donations. It's much appreciated. And uh, you all have a good night, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.